Okay, here's a really quick uh, tutorial about how to make uh, beetroot leaves with the new beetroot leaf stencils that we've just produced. Um, I've already made some here, so I'll just show you these and I'll get a, a close-up done of those on the video. Um, but these are lovely little bright green beetroot leaves. I've deliberately done them bright green because I want them to, to look as if they've just started to sprout again. Um, but you can do them in all, all different all different shades of green. So I've got um, in the set there are two beet leaf. I've left one behind by the looks of it. Um, there's two beet leaf ones. One's the small one and one's the larger one. And there is actually a radish one which goes with that. Um, it's helpful if you prepare some red painted flower wire before you start as well. You'll need some of those. That's typical that I've started to cough. We've got quite a lot of pollen in the air. It's a very warm day today. So um, you also need to uh, prepare uh, beetroot red um, goo, which is, um, I can't remember what the mix is. I think it's 50%, um, no, 30%, let me think again. Yeah, it's a 50-50 mix of Fimo's uh, carmine and Primo's alizarin crimson and then I've added obviously um, quite a lot of liquid Fimo so that makes it quite translucent so that's my mix and what I do when I'm stenciling is I prepare myself a palette so that's the colour I'm using on there if you like a deeper red then um, you can add a bit more blue into there a bit more navy blue is good in there to make it deeper um, and you can use the same mix to make the actual beets which I will tell you about later except that instead of using liquid Fimo to, to make it more translucent you'd be using translucent uh, polymer clay right so oh, I'll just quickly show you the the radish leaves ready made up as well I've made a bundle of these here so that you can use them later and they're very subtle, but you can see the little veins in them. So put those to one side as well. So I've chosen to start off using the smaller of the veins um, because I want to make a, a set, a very small set of, of red beetroot. Um, I tend to use the smaller one for the little beetroots and the larger one for the turnip type plants. So I'm going to use this very small one. You'll see that it's very finely um, uh, lasered so that it's really, really thin. If you don't clean it, and I'm, I'm terrible for not cleaning, you will find that the that you get um, goo stuck in the in the little holes. Um, and I always say that our stencils are single plus use so I do use them more than once but I can't guarantee them if you use them badly so I say single plus now the best way to use them well is to prepare all your stencils with baby oil and then leave them on a piece of tissue for quite a while to suck out the 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 surface because you don't want to be leaving a lot of baby oil on the surface of your tile. In this case I'm quite happy for these leaves to be shiny but normally I would uh, prefer to have them more more um, more matte and when I want a really matte finish I'll just pop this over here um, I'll use a terracotta tile that's this is a, a tile that I'm in the middle of making some um, fern leaves on. So I'll just pop that back over there. Hopefully not knock my camera on the way past, because I did last time. So you've got your mix ready mix, and it needs to be reasonably thin. I'll just bring it close to the center of the shot. It needs to be reasonably thin so that it's, I would say that it was a bit like oil paint really to the for thickness 
uh, that's so that it goes through this fine stencil. There are times when you'd use it thicker, but in this case you want it quite thin. So you place a little bit of your goo at the bottom of the stencil between the the words on the stencil and the, um, the the holes in it. And I tend to start at the top of the of of my top corner of my tile. There are other st lots of other stencils that it helps to do that for lining up, and and this one also it helps to do it for lining up. So it's always best to start there, and then you simply scrape it. Scrape, oops, I better bring this in so you can see it in shot. Scrape your spatula clean between runs. Scrape again until you've got it nice and clean. The reason I want the surface of the stencil reasonably clean is because if you make this bottom layer too thick, as you pick the stencil up, it'll leave a very bumpy print. And you can see that that's not a bumpy print. I'm rather afraid that the print I did last week when I was trying to do this video before and failed was quite a bumpy print so I might have problems with it because that's the one I'm going to use for the second stage. So then all you do is you carry on um, stenciling all the way across your tile. Don't worry about a little bit of of uh, goo on your tile but if you get too much I'll try and put too much on so you can see what I mean um, if you get too much on you can simply clean your, st your palette knife and just pick that back up and put it on back on your tile so I'll move that out of the way so this is the stage we say yeah here's one I prepared earlier but I prepared it badly and uh, I think we put our thumb right in the middle of it last week when when it came when it went out. So it's not a very not a very good uh, example. But I didn't want to have to make another one and, and prepare it this morning. So you need a clean spatula. I'll use another one, but I tend to just use toilet paper to clean my spatula between colours. Um, another thing that's worth remembering about your spatula is. Some of these Chinese ones are a bit rough. This one is, it could have done to be uh, sanded. It's a good idea to use a very fine sandpaper and sand the edge of that spatula so that you don't, you're not constantly scraping the, the card on, the, on your card stencil. With this particular um, stencil, it doesn't matter so much, but there are some where it really does damage the card. Right, so the next thing I need to do is to bring this second stencil, which lays right over the first one. As I say, I put my thumb right in the middle of that one, so it's it's ruined. But I don't worry about that. If I get a bad leaf, I just toss it into the bad leaf pot, and it either goes to my granddaughter or to some other child who might like to play with it. So line that up so that you can see all of those... Um, veins within the stencil and that the end just about touches the end of the little stem part and I've got some um, green goo here prepared and you need to pick up a little bit of this I've only got a little bit prepared so um, but um, with green with greens there really are I'll just put this down and explain you really only need three colours. You need a, a darkest green, a yellow, uh, preferably the lemon yellow, and a white. And you can mix almost the full spectrum of greens with those, with only a few little tweaks. So that's the that's the best um, colour mix colour uh, first colours to start with. If you you know you can't mix them all at once because your hands simply get too tired for the mixing. Right, let's line this up again and just stencil over. And you can decide how thick or how thin you want these leaves to be. If Do you want them really delicate? In which case they'll be quite translucent because this is the thing about adding li uh, liquid femur to femur. It adds translucency. So if you make this too thin, your leaves can look quite translucent so I try not to make them too thin at this this stage 
this covers up some of the the beautiful veins but don't worry because when you take them off the tile you'll see them and the second one and if you want to you can vary the shades of this color just simply by adding other colors so you can make it lighter by adding yellows and whites or darker by adding more more of this dark green color let me show you what i mean the um stem doesn't go green particularly because it's already the same depth as the top color that you're putting on so you'll find overall it's worth taking time to line up because if you line it up really well you'll get a good result um, overall the red stays red let's just mix a little bit of the darker green in so that not all of our leaves are exactly the same color because if you vary the colors of your leaves you'll get a much more realistic effect so let's just stencil that and that's that it's that easy i'm not worried about the little bits of uh clay that will just come off the tile very easily so that that's how you would uh finish that off then of course we the last thing that we want is just let me move this out of the way is to stick the stems on and um I may actually change this stencil a little bit so that I can um, put more of the stem stems on without problems because when we first did designed this we forgot to design them so that they didn't overlap so if you look you'll see that that stem won't actually fit in there without touching the lower leaf so you have to bend it so I'll start on the bottom layer so the best thing to do is actually is to put a little Bit of the goo on the edge of your tile. I'll put it at that edge, but it would normally be easy, possibly easier for me to put it at the bottom edge. But just all you need to do is roll your. I don't want my hand to be in the shot all the time. Roll your uh, flower wire, and this is a fine flower wire. This is just a size thirty or thirty-two, even it may be into the goo and then place it in the center of the leaf you can make it go all the way to the end or start halfway down i've started halfway down there and again this might be what frank calls bad hand when my hand goes right in the middle of the shot so stick that down again one more i'll do on this one I'll turn it round so you can see it that. And pop that on there. If you put too much on it'll look gloopy, so make sure that you don't put too much on. When you've got a line like that, it's a good idea to take um single-sided blade which I haven't got with me because I didn't prepare very well so I'll just do it with the edge of this blade and just touch it on the whole thing to make sure that it's in contact all the way along the leaf and when you get to the second layer there's a little bit of a problem because the stem might touch the leaf below so the easiest way to solve that one is simply to bend this halfway along then roll it in the goo or just smear it in as you wish and then put it on then and it's it's coming off the edge and the same that will happen it might even overlap there but put them all the way along like that and that's how to make the leaf for your beets it's exactly the same for the large beets which I haven't shown you large beet is here I'll try and get a close-up of those for you as well and for the radish which I showed you earlier so um, 
Making small vegetables is pretty easy. It's the same with carrots, beetroot, radish, etc. The only problem is colour. The very first time I made any beets, I was still using caning, but I decided that I was going, uh, turnips I was making, that turnips and beets I'm just going to refer to as beets. Um, the first time I made them, I made them by a caned method. I really prefer to use uh, pastel colours. Now I find um, the caning can be a little bit clumsy. So I'll just show you the shape for making the beet first because that one really doesn't need a lot of colour on it. I do realise I haven't brought myself um, a tile for putting colour on. So I'm just going to reach over and get a, a tile out for putting colour on because otherwise we'll be stuck without. Right, so the beet doesn't really need a lot of colour. What I would probably tend to do is put some dirt on it. And the dirt that I tend to use is old tea bag dirt. However, some of these colours in my um, box of tricks, which is, uh, they're all um, Conte crayons, which I do like very much. I'm not sure if I've got the colour that I most would like to put on beets. Probably this, a sort of greyed out brown would be good. Maybe a bit um, more of the greyness. So I might actually add a bit of grey to the brown. So the first thing that we need to do, I'll just pop that out of the way for a moment, is make the shape of the beet. And um, I haven't sized this for you. You'll have to, um, unless you're one of my patrons, in which case... We're beginning to build up a sizing, um, a sizing chart, um, but I haven't got the sizes written down to, to hand at the moment. Um, so the, the first thing that you do is make a little ball. And I'm going to imagine this is quite a big beat. Let me see how, how many of those, six. So that would be quite a big beat. I'll take it a bit more. You have to imagine that if you put 12 of them side by side, would they be too big to make the size of a beet? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it might be still a little bit big. I don't want to go too small though. Um, and of course, most vegetables come in many sizes, so don't get too hung up about it, especially not on your first run. So you make a little ball, you'll get the stuff all over your fingernails. This is why I keep this stuff. This is the this stuff you use for the toilet, but it's excellent for this job because it's not full of grease. So it's just cleaning without without the added grease. So you make a ball, roll, roll it around until you've got a ball, and then you just start to pinch the bottom edge because you want a little bit of a tail. You can make that tail as long and as dramatic as you like, but I think with the beets, quite a simple tail is good because often they're just pulled off anyway and the and the roots of a beet come out from that little tail and they get torn off anyway so um also I haven't really brought any of my tools down I don't know why that is um so what I'll have to do is show you normally I would use a, a craft tool one of my little dental tools or something to make some marks but this is just as good just make a few little indentations and lines and those of you who have seen how I make my potatoes will see that I use this edge of my blade to make little eye shapes so those those little indentations will just make it look a little bit rough it you don't want it too perfect because um, nature doesn't make perfect things really well actually it, it, it does make some pretty perfect things but um, when things are, are as rough as a beetroot in the ground, it, they'll get um, damaged, nibbled, scratched. And they also actually come with little lines where the, where the tiny little roots come out. So don't overdo it, but just put some indentations in. So I'll put that one to one side. In fact, I would normally just put it on that block on that on that tile whatever tile i'm working on that's where things will go and that would tend to go with its little tail up so it doesn't get bent right um 
clean your hands if you're going on to a different type of colour from that. So <coughs> I'm going to go straight on to my mixes for radish and, and turnip. The turnip I'm going to make is one that I find really attractive. It's the, the one I used to see in Paris in spring whenever uh, summer whenever we went in june it's about this time just a little bit about the 16th of june around there something like like that we used to go to paris and um they had these beautiful purple turnips which i'll try and show on the video as a still which i uh took time to draw because i found them so attractive and um so i'm just going to make some of those for you now obviously they're a big there are big turnips and, and um, all sorts of different types of, of the turnip family. But this is quite a small one. It's often even smaller than a beet. Now what I've done here is I've made a mix that I've put one, two, one. White to translucent, approximately. I think I've put a little bit more translucent than white. Just a little bit more, but it's approximately one to one. I tend to tweak those levels very slightly towards more translucency just because I like things to look quite delicate. Um, with this one, it's exactly the same. Um, the shape is even, it's more squat and, and it's an even smaller little um, turnip. They do come quite small indeed. And so I will make the same sort of shape with this one but even flatter so you have to work a little bit with it so that you you sort of push it back with your thumb and get that little flat shape and once again it will have some some little bits of of damage and especially they have a little bit beats too towards the top end which I forgot to say before um, so it, it can be worth your while just playing around with this top edge. It's difficult for you to see this one because it's white and it'll be the same with the with the radish. But um, just take it from me, I'm working my way around this round the central bit, which I'm later going to drill. So I've given that one a slightly longer, finer tail. Oops. That one's not sticking up anymore, it's decided to, but not that it matters, it can it can stick up or fall, fall down. I've lost that one. So that one is now <coughs> sitting with its friend, the beetroot, and I'll want to do a good pile of these before I start working on the rest of the process. Um, but I don't want to, um, I don't want to sit here and bore you by making loads of these. So the radish, I've put one to two, one W to two, and that that colon um, means that it's a ratio. One to two, one W to two T, one white to two translucent. That tends to be what I use. People ask me which color, which uh, brand I use, and I use all of them. Um, and I have there's only one way I can tell you which one I choose. It's the colour that makes my heart sing, basically. That sounds a bit woo-woo, doesn't it? But when you pick up this beautiful alizarin crimson, and that's all it is, it's just plain alizarin crimson, no mix of translucent, because it's a fairly translucent pigment anyway. Um, that colour is just delicious, and I choose that brand in that colour because it's so lovely. I also like their wasabi very much and their, there's a red that they do called pomegranate which is a really beautiful colour and they also do a nice colour called rhino and I choose all those colours in that brand because they're so nice. Um, in Fimo I'll choose the yellow because no other brand does that lemon yellow. Uh, I don't know why, I think it's a, probably a difficult pigment, pigment to get hold of or something. Um, at one point it went a bit green and it went a bit funny and I wasn't happy with it but it's come back now, come back down to earth. Sometimes they add optical brightness that just, if they put too much in it goes a bit weird. 
Um, but now I like the lemon yellow from Fimo. And my favourite green of all is Cernit's Olive Green. So I just literally choose between the, the colours, whatever really works for me. Um, so, and sometimes I'll mix them together, like um, the mix for the goo, which I'll, uh, which we use for the leaf, which we use for the leaves, um, is a mix of both Fimo uh, uh, Carmine and the Alizarin Crimson. So uh, it, do, it really doesn't matter if you mix it. Right, so I'm going to make a, a tiny little French breakfast rad radish. That's my favourite it, because it's got that dual colour. Um, but you can also make the little round radishes, of course. They have the same sort of shape leaves, so I just use the same. I use the same um, stencil for both both the leaves. So that's a long one, and I, once again, it has that tiny, tiny little tail on it. There we go. Right to colour each of these, I'll bring this forward. Uh, first of all, I'll do the. Which one shall I do first? I'll do this purple one first because that's a quite a strange colour and it, and I don't want it all over the place either. So, um, so when you're using these, make sure not to scratch the side that's got the, the number of the colour on because if you do, you'll never remember what was your favourite colour. And there are quite a lot of colours. They used to be made in Paris, but I'm afraid now they're made in China and I'm not sure that the quality is quite there. But uh, anyway, I think most of these are the, are the made in Paris ones because I've had these for years. So you need to just uh, scrape yourself off a little bit of, of your colour. Make sure that your fingers are clean. So keep one of these pieces of of moist tissue. The other thing that I use sometimes is a um, a makeup remover with a spot of rose water on, which is quite kind to the skin and a nice cleaning too. So now you need a a paintbrush. I'll take a slightly bigger one so that I can use the smallest one for the radish. And uh, dip your paintbrush into the powder and take hold of the little vegetable that you're going to colour and colour them before you bake them. You can go back and add extra colour after you've baked them. Now you'll see this colour's going all over my hand and I don't want it to go on the base of this little vegetable. So I'm going to have to make absolutely sure that I clean it off either between vegetables or I make sure that it doesn't go get anywhere near the next one. So I'm going right the way around quite carefully and putting quite a lot on and then carefully letting go. I have already, I have got a little bit of a spot on there so I'm not happy with that but hopefully um, I'll be able to scrape that one off after it's baked if it hasn't bled in too much. Um, so obviously I'd have a tile full of those before I finished, but between each one, you're better off just wiping your fingers so that you don't transfer the powder to the next one. So that's my, I'll put that over there so I remember which one that is. And I'll go to my thin one for the radish. Now the radish is a, a very strange colour. It's not the same as the other type of radish. I think... The reds in this series are quite strongly different. I mean, there's, there's so many in the range. Um, and you really need to go towards the uh, crim uh, crimson, away from the scarlet range. Let me show you what the difference between a crimson and a scarlet. So that's a scarlet. And that's a crimson. And that's somewhere in between. And I've got all sorts of these things that are in between these colours and some of them more purpley, etc. There's a, oh, is that, I think that one might be the same as that one, but a cheap Chinese version. 
no it's not it's a bit more bluey that one's got some blue and some white added but they've got lots and lots I, um i'll try and see i haven't got my glasses on but i'll try and see what color the one i am using at the moment is this one says 39 on it so um let me see if i can find the purple purple in paris one this one says I think it's 55 my I haven't got my glasses oh two, uh, two three four oh 50 55 it looks like that one's got a, a prefix to it don't know and that one that one's got a prefix as well but it's it's not very oh two that's two three four oh as well so all oh, right so I'm, I must just scratch some of this off so this is for the french breakfast but the other type of radish have a different color i might it might be that i use that in between color for french breakfast i can't really remember so i'm just i'm winging it a bit um this next color down which it might be the one actually i actually use is number I think it says 85 but it might be a six i think it's an 85 that one but anyway you 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 choose your colors carefully really make sure that you choose your colors um live with an actual item in front of you if you can but obviously um i haven't got any at the moment we're in lockdown and so um there's no availability of weird and wonderful vegetables so the same with this one work your way around it gently without getting any you can hold, see that i'm holding this down towards the tile you can't see from that camera but you can from this one i think um so that any extra um powder falls back on the tile and not anywhere near my work as i say make sure you put plenty on and if you're not careful you'll find that you've missed a bit on the back and that can look a bit clumsy when you when you get down to it but you can um add color um if you make your own uh, mix of color and i think i've not really done the, this because i usually get it right but i think you can make your own color uh, with a bit of alcohol and powder color i'm not certain so <laughs> don't quote me on that because i might be wrong i'll try it later and um and well certainly let my patrons know what my what the results of that experimentation were so there's my french bread breakfast radish and finally the um beet just wants di dirtying my mouth my voice went funny then because i was uh working with a uh, paintbrush in my mouth which is something I do really rather often so I'll put that dirty brown on there it's a greyish brown I think that's the colour I want I might find that it's not quite greyish enough I'm trying to put my glasses on but I haven't got them in here so I'm stuck without them so once again just you can put this all over this one. Oh yeah that's perfect it takes off the shine and looks as if it's been in the ground perfect happy with that that's a, a really good color and that one is let me see oh that might be two three four oh and then that could be 34 but I, i'm not absolutely certain it could be 54 but haven't i just had a 54 um anyway I, i'll try and get those numbers written down looked looked up and written down for you to make sure that you get them right uh, right so those will go into the oven now and when they come out of the oven i'll need to have my dremel ready to drill them because that's absolutely the best way to attach the tops so the last part of the job is simply to put the little um 
it's just started to rain outside. The last part of the job is to put the little um, stems in. Now, once you've made one of these stems, you can actually get it to shape slightly just by, mostly by, you can either use a little peg, one of those little wooden pegs that you get uh, from the sort of Asian shops and uh, hold it, especially if you put it somewhere warm so that the warmth, it's a bit like doing your hair. The other thing you can do is as you as you bend it, it sometimes takes on a slightly different shape. And the other thing that you can do, if you wish, is to paint the back with some liquid Fimo and just leave it. And some of them come out just a little bit crinkly. I've got one here that'll, that'll just show you. Um, in fact, no, I didn't even put liquid Fimo on that. It's just a bending thing. It's just decided it's going to crinkle. So you don't have to have perfectly flat leaves etc. So let's start off with the um, um, beetroot and it won't be shiny because it's come out of the ground so this one doesn't need to be shiny. If you, would, if you were doing a, an actual beet that, uh, that's already been prepared then you would need to use the colour without any uh, brown on the surface and probably with a bit more translucent. So anyway, let's just drill into this. Set, set your drill to a fairly high setting. Oh, and incidentally, I've got a little ball-ended tool on this. I'll just stop it. I don't know whether you can see that that's a ball-ended tool. So I, what I do is I sit and do all of my um, vegetables at one time, and then I'll just have a whole heap. I'll just throw that away. So it's just a bit messy, I think. And I'll have, have a whole heap of that sort of drill. Uh, it's not sawdust, obviously. It's um, it's plastic dust, really. Um, probably not very um, ecologically sound, but hey. Um, so here I've got some brown goo. You can use green or you can use self-colour, but I like to use brown. It just gives a little bit of a, a sort of a look. To, to the joining part and then decide how many leaves you want to have coming out of this beet. It depends whether it's growing in the garden, whether it's been harvested and it's poked a few new ones up or could be anything but you, probably three or four of, or five uh, little leaves. I'll put three in this one I think and I don't want them to be too long so I'm going to cut a little bit off and then it's very, very simple. You can either use your cocktail stick to put some goo in the middle of there, or you can simply pick some up with the end of your stems and just poke them in. You may find that there's extra goo hanging around, around the outside and that's perfectly okay, because all you need to do is put even a little bit more on to make sure that it fills the space and then if there's too much of it, I'm a big fan of using toilet paper, especially because we've all got loads of it now, haven't we? Well, I haven't. I've just got the normal amount, but uh, she said, feeling very smug. Um, but yes, toilet paper is a smaller amount than kitchen roll, you know, and you can use it several times before you throw it away. So it's not much. It's not much to use. I want to just fill that up a bit more because there's a bit of a hole there. One thing that can happen if you put too much of this goo in, if you put too much, if you put a lot of clay or a lot of liquid femur or a lot of this goo in, it can actually expand while it's baking a little bit, and it can actually crack the crack the um, the vegetable. So don't put too much in because if you if you leave it a little bit empty, it's got room to to move. So that's the beet. And I would tend to put those in bunches as well together. Um, and we can, do, we can do this little turn it with the same drill bit, but the, uh, the radish is a bit small. Got to make sure this goes through the middle and doesn't go through my finger. So 
so I think just I'll use a little bit of green in this one. I think it'll look a little bit better. The brown's more for the for the beetroot. So I'll mix up a little bit of fairly light green on a cocktail stick and just pop that in. Now, when I bought these little turnips in Paris when I was there, I found them to be sprouting anew from tiny, with tiny sprouts, not big ones as if they were still growing in the garden. But I've made the big, the big size for these, so I'll just use the big ones as if they're growing in the garden. So obviously, do some um, bigger ones on the outside, bigger um, leaves on the outside, and then the smaller ones will go into the middle so just snipping these so you can actually put smaller bits of flower wire on if you want in the first place however it's easier to handle if you just make them a bit long and, and snip them later as you need them so I just pop that in there and three's a nice number actually you can have more obviously but um Odd numbers always look better than even numbers in things like this. So there's that one. That one's for growing in the garden or for just harvesting. But in the shops, the tops will tend to be cut off, but they start to sprout a little bit. So you can put, actually you can put any little green leaf sprouting out of that, that one. Okay, so as you'll see, this drill bit is way too big for this little, tiny little thing. So I need to change the drill bit. Um, you might not be lucky enough to have one of these um, sty Dremel styluses and, and they've changed the design since then. I don't know whether it's because it looks a bit gun-like and people maybe decided that they were going to change it and now they've got one that you hold like that and I really don't like it as much. I, I like this one better. Anyway, generally there's a, a push thing to to undo that but uh, the stylus came with um, or comes with an engraving tool rather than this little chuck so I bought the chuck to go with it I need to push that to get this little thing in so not too, I, I can't put too thinner a hole, smaller hole in it. I'll turn this down a bit. Oh, I've already done that. Um, because if I use too small a bit, I can't get any of the stems in. So just have to be very, very careful getting started. When it starts to spin, you've probably got got enough. If it comes out of your fingers, you've probably got enough. So this is the one that's most likely to break because the hole's so small. And um, you could actually just squirt a bit of ordinary liquid Fimo down, down in there. I'll use green for this one as well, I think. So just enough just to hold the, the stems in. And maybe I'll put some of these ones a bit taller. Not that tall though. So you can probably only get a maximum of three in this anyway. And I think I wish I'd got these slightly shaped. I think they look a little bit flat, really. So but try and get different sizes because they come on the stencil in different sizes. Here's a tiny one. I'll probably put more than three in if I can fit them in. But no, I think three is enough. I think it's going to, it's going to crack if I if I try putting more than three in. But it looks quite cute. That one's not a perfect one, but it'll do. And they'll bend as far as you've got wire. They'll bend, obviously. So I'm quite happy with those, and I'm going to go up, go ahead today and make a load of stock because. I've got nothing in my miniature store at the moment, so I'm going to make a load of bunches of those. And bunches are very popular, so um, 
so that's what I'm going to make myself do this week and um, keep my customers happy and uh, but they as you can see very easy to make and I'm very happy with the way they look I've never made actually made one this is the first time I've made them to finished um, before I've always used uh, uh, polymer clay slices and then I've veined the slices but I just thought this has to be an easier way and I do like that stenciled effect on the on the front of the leaves so I'm happy with that very happy well thank you for, for watching and um, do like and share and if you've learned something please feel free to buy me a coffee because um, we don't really earn anything on on YouTube these days so um, any contributions for your learning are gratefully accepted and of course you can always join my patrons who get to see all my videos and lots of live feeds that nobody else sees and they get to hear lots of secrets before anybody else knows them thank you very much bye